Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How you all doing today? Today we're looking at a Whirlpool Gold. This is actually commercially rated. It says commercial quality. Look here, we can find the model number. So this one's not heating. So basically, I suspect the thermal cutoff fuse. The thermal cutoff fuse usually blows when the vent is plugged up. The vent that comes out into the wall or whatever is kinked and is plugged up. And that's what usually blows the thermal cutoff fuse. It could be the heat element as well. well we're going to check that right now. First thing that we need to do is open up this panel here on the bottom. This particular one has a top that comes off by these screws up here. Loosen these and the top will come off. Hopefully we won't need to do that. Want to take out the lint filter and then we're going to stick a flathead screwdriver in here and here and then pull this front panel off so we can look and see if the thermal cutoff is blown. Okay, so I have a straight edge. Basically, we go in here and find where the tang is. The tang is right here on this one. And it's up on the top edge of this. So you bring your uh, straight edge to the top edge and sort of wedge it in there, and sort of pull down. Kind of tricky to do with one hand, but yeah, you'll get it to use both hands. One hand on the tang and one hand pulling it. Okay, you can see how the tang is basically. Here's the tang. And what you want to do is stick your straight edge on the top edge of it and push down. And then the front panel will come off. So underneath this panel here, or this cowl, whatever you want to call it, the uh, uh, vent direction, you can see this has quite a bit of lint in it, which is definitely a hazard which I'll have to clean out. And so basically to take this front cowl here off, basically on this one, we only have two screws, one here and one here. And then once we get this off, we'll be able to access the thermal, uh, thermal cutoff fuse a little bit easier. You can still access it from here, but it's a little tricky. And so, harder to see with the camera as well. But it is in there, especially now that I think about it, it might be easier to see with the camera. Anyway. Let's take this puppy off and see what we got. Okay, so we got the cowl off. You can see it's about a quarter plugged up with lint. It's got this almost looks like part of a rug in here. So Square there, square piece of lint. Anyway, there's a thermal cutoff right there. It's the little white thing. Now this thing is not plugged in right now. This is going to be your heat element here. This is a thermal cutoff. This usually blows. This is usually the thing that blows. It's this white thing with the two wires on it right there. And that's the thing we need to test. So basically, we're going to set the meter on. This one we can set it on. I have a, a tone. This one has a tone generator, so when I when I make the connection, it's going to make a tone. So basically, all I have to do is stick it in here and see if I get a tone. And ideally, I want to isolate that. So in order to isolate it, I 
I need to pull off one of these leads. It just get that lead off there so it, that by some chance it's not making a connection somewhere else down the line so that we get that isolated and so we get a for sure reading on that. Okay, so that thermal cutoff is still good. So next thing we're going to do is check this heat element. So here we can go right across and it's probably a good idea to leave that disconnected for now so we can sort of isolate the heat element. And this heat element is still good. So it's going to be there's a thermal cutoff inside here in the back. There's a thermostat and a thermal cutoff. It's probably going to be that thermal cutoff. Not likely a timer issue. It's probably going to be that thermal cutoff. And so I'm going to test that right now. Okay, so basically the thermal cutoff was bad. This is basically what the heat element. I actually have an extra one. I have lots of extra parts. If you need parts, you can contact me. I may have what you need. A lot of hard to find parts I have as well. So this thermal, this is the thermal cutoff basically that's inside here. Uh, in order to get access to this, basically you have to take off this screw right here, that screw right there, and then also there may be one on the back right that holds the back part on that thing there. So this, this is basically the, the high limit cutoff. So that, that basically cuts off when it just gets too, gets too hot. I think it's like a 300 degree. Um, I can't hardly read it. I think it's like a 300 degree, so if the if it gets over 300 degrees, that'll that'll cut off. So basically, this is a non-resettable cutoff. See, it does not reset, so you have to replace it. So on this one, basically, I have to get back in the back here with a small nut driver and take this off, and then I'll swap it uh, with a good one. And so basically, if we set our meter on ohms or continuity, we can see that this here should have continuity crossed here. And this one's actually good. So, and that one in there is shot. So I'm going to have to reach in there and uh, replace it. And then what I'll also do is I may take a brush and go back behind here and make sure there's no lint clogging up the motor because lint tends to clog up motors and make them fail quicker. And so that's your dryer tip for today. If this helped you, please send me a donation. It's Bill's Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. And if you need any help, you can also contact me, 707-445-1591. And email address, z underscore fixitman at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching. Keep on recycling and repairing.